Fine, we need to Lord admit Lord. our all members, right? Uh, Lord. Good morning, Dhaka. Uh, good morning, everyone from Climate Launchpad Dhaka team and from GenLab. I am Rathul Dev, uh, country lead for Climate Launchpad in Bangladesh, Bhutan, and Myanmar, and also the executive director of uh, GenLab. I'm calling you from, uh, joining you from Berlin, Germany, and we also have few of our guests uh, outside of uh, uh, Asia or Bangladesh, and also most of our participants are from Bangladesh. So uh, today is the national finale for Climate Launchpad Bangladesh. Uh, before we proceed to our most desired uh, part, which is the pitching and then Q&A, and finally deriving our top three team to be going for regional finale, let's just talk a little about what Climate Launchpad is all about and how we have come to this far. Climate Launchpad is actually an initiative of European Union, Climate Guys European Union. Uh, it has been started in 2016. At the beginning, it was taking place only in European Union. And later on, from 2018, they started spreading all around the world. And for the first time, it's happening in Bangladesh. And GenLab, our, is, is, we lead GenLab. GenLab is a youth-led social enterprise. We are happy that we are doing it in all three countries and also in Bhutan and Myanmar is working under our capacity. Uh, so what we did so far in Climate Launchpad, in Bangladesh, we have received 106 applications. Out of 106 applications, we finally uh, did all the process. At the beginning, it was online courses on entrepreneurship and, uh, and, and green business. From there, we went to boot camp and from boot camp, we, we transferred uh, to follow-up sessions. And after the follow-up sessions, uh, there was, how, there was uh, uh, training programs on how to do online teaching and everything. Now, after they're prepared, they have got feedback from our coaches and they have learned a lot. Now we have five final ideas. And these ideas are mostly based on green business, which are helpful for climate, which are helpful for the society. So what I will do I would, uh, I would, I would. Before we we go to our uh, exact pitching session, I would love to share one a small video. The video will uh, give you an idea about what we did in Climate Launchpad last year. Uh, as, as we know, this is the first time we are have doing everything online. Uh, so this year it's a different thing. But how we do everything in Climate Launchpad, how the connectivity works how everything works. We will show you a small video. And by the video, you'll be getting an idea of what happened last year in 2019. Climate change is incredibly complicated, so we need many things. But in the end, if I could change one thing, I would love for governments to create markets around problems so entrepreneurs can come in. Startups are definitely one of the ways to, uh, to push innovations further. From all around the world, different ideas working together. We need to create profitable businesses that actually solve climate change. And that's why we marry the two concepts of business, entrepreneurship, uh, and profitability. can't see anything, I think. Oh, I guess mistakenly it was only screen, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So please uh, share the video. Right. It's okay now. <laughs> Climate change is incredibly complicated, so we need many things. But in the end, if I could change one thing, I would love for governments 
to create markets around problems so entrepreneurs can come in. Startups are definitely one of the ways to, uh, to push innovations further. From all around the world, different ideas working together. We need to create profitable businesses that actually solve climate change. And that's why we marry the two concepts of business, entrepreneurship, uh, and profitability, so we can have companies, real companies, that are doing something about it. Because we see so many problems everywhere, and because there's so much talent everywhere, it's nice to start tapping to, to places that normally don't get a program like Climate Logica. It's about here, meeting like-minded people who want to push the green agenda, and actually on the ground making it happen. Don't waste your time waiting and thinking that you're going to do tomorrow, because tomorrow you don't know if you're going to wake up. So just go there and do it, do it. It's one of the best things we've ever done, both personally, individually, and as a business, because the amount that you learn through this program is immense. We train you in how to be skillful, how to be smart in starting your company. Because otherwise ideas just die out. It's like really important uh, things that we will actually learn through the program, and that's, that's what matters. You will get incredible experience, you will get incredible coaching, and then you get to test your idea for real. I think when the rubber hits the road, I think you need a solution that will make your customer's life easier, better, and that's what you need to focus on. And the impact you create is almost invisible. It comes as a consequence of you doing your job. And this will unlock me the doors for the success, definitely. Our winner this time is Leafy K.E. This is really an energy booster and it's um, great to be able to plug into a network that all are working for the same cause. It's rare to see someone um, understand what you're trying to do in the market and in your own space or dream that you're trying to achieve. Um, the visibility it gives you whether you win or not is good enough um, on a global scale. We must bring ideas together. We must bring fragments of solutions together into much more holistic, uh, integrated um, combinations and we must learn to bring out the value of our diversity together. It's the only hope we have. Everyone is not safe. We need to take action, and I believe as humanity we can solve this, and we should solve it now. All right, uh, thank you so much for watching. I guess that gave you a brief idea about what happened in Climate Launchpad and how everyone from all around the globe actually come together in the national global closing ceremony. Last year, it took place in Netherlands and in every year it rooms around in the other countries. So what happens to the country, uh, what happens to Bangladeshi participants after they succeed in the closing ceremony? Our top three team will participate in the regional finale with all the South Asian countries, which are like the third countries. We know which third countries are. So all, all, all we, against them, all, against all other third countries, our team will participate. And then the best team, the best team from South Asian country will go for the global uh, ceremony. And after the global ceremony, top 10 team gets a thematic award and then innovation, uh, incubation support. And after the incubation, they get acceleration support from uh, European Union. So... Now that we already talked about uh, what Climate Launchpad is all about, uh, let me have the honor to introduce our chief guest today. Our chief guest today is uh, Soyad Mozibul Haq. Uh, Mozibul Haq is uh, currently uh, serving Bangladesh government as the, an additional secretary in the ICT division. And he leads the startup Bangladesh uh, program under the ICT division program. And but as we know that ICT division and Bangladesh government has been upholding a lot of startup and entrepreneurship idea. Mojibul Hoxar is uh, one of the pioneer and also is the key person behind all that we see every, every, every regular basis. So uh, let me share a little short video about Sir. So uh, that's kind of an introduction of him. Video is not playing. 
Thank you. Apology again for this sort of technical difficulties. We all are kind of new in handling Zoom and Facebook Live. Apology in advance. Uh, so thank you, uh, Mr. Mojibul Hak, sir, for joining us. Sir, we will take a small uh, uh, speech from you later in later part of the session. Uh, now we will gradually move forward uh, to our uh, introducing our Jubi panel. And uh, let's have another round to introduce our jury panel here. Thank you to all our juries. Uh, we are let uh, we have already seen and got introduced our with our jury board in a digital manner. But let me uh, call uh, uh, share their names and the designation once again. We have Miss Kerry Jennings. From, she is the Poli research and policy director of Freshwater Society. Uh, Freshwater is working in Minnesota states of uh, Minnesota in U United States of America. And Kerry Jennings is also working uh, with uh, the U.S. Alumni Exchange Program, U.S. State Department Exchange Program. Uh, and we also have Mr. Nazmul Korim. Uh, Mr. Nazmul Korim is working uh, as, uh, uh, with uh, uh, Abishkar uh, Frontier Fund. Abishkar Frontier Fund uh, works with Angel Investment and they try to invest uh, with uh, uh, new age startups. And along with him, we have Mr. Abu Yusuf MD Abdullah. Abdullah sir is working as a professor in Institute of Business Administration, University of Dhaka on leave. And currently he is also as the vice working as the vice chancellor of Northern University of Business and Technology in Khulna. And also we do have Mr. Samim Esanul Haq. Shamim Esanul Haq sir is an assistant professor of Bragg Business School. Along with that, he is a senior fellow of Center for Entrepreneurship Development. Uh, so now that we got introduced with four of our jury board members, uh, I guess without any further ado, we will move forward to our actual part, the pitching session. And uh, before we go 
for their pitch and Q and A, another short video to get introduced with who the teams are. Uh, and yeah, let's watch our team. everyone so we finally watched all our five teams who joined the session we'll be joining the session so uh, i guess uh, we already have representative from our five teams so how the uh, climate launch pad pitching and and the q and will take place every team they gets a total of five minutes to pitch their idea and after the pitching or the video show then they will get three minutes additional three minutes for question and answer session so as technical issues is a problem during COVID and we don't know if internet will work and everything. So what we did is we have collected the pre-recorded uh, pitch. Our team will uh, show the pre-recorded pitch again to our jury board members. And after one video has been shown, then our panel will be open for question and answer session to uh, the teams. And also a reminder to our participants or applicants, uh, it is preferable that only one person from your team answers the question because time is very limited. Only three minutes you get. So swapping you know, between your team might kill your own time. So it's better that one of your teammates only answer. This part will be conducted by my colleague, our uh, manager of strategy and development, uh, Mr. Shojib Hassan. Shojib, can you please uh, take over? Uh, thank you, Ratuza, uh, for giving me the floor. Uh, and um, welcome, everyone, uh, in the today's speech session of Climate Launchpad 2020. Uh, I believe all of our jury members and all of our uh, at least one representative from each team is present here. So we will uh, start the session uh, alphabetically by the team name. First, I will show the presentation they made, all the teams. And then the jury member will get their three minutes for asking questions towards the team member. So how it will happen that uh, after uh, showing the videos on the screen, the jury members will, uh, whoever wants to ask the questions, uh, we will give them a floor. They will ask the questions and the team, uh, I will ask the teams to answer the question as short as possible so that jury members can ask them more questions in the shortest time possible. So let's start with the team text at the very beginning. Uh, let me just start a video uh, of team Cassetex. Hello everyone, I am Gopal, I am an engineer and I also take care of my family transport business in Rangpur. Due to lack of supply of CNG in my area, for the last 6 years we have been using electric three-wheelers for carrying commercial goods. Bangladesh has made a great progress in this area with respect to many countries 
by deploying more than 1 million electric vehicles and has creating lots of jobs along the way. I have realized there are scope to improve the energy efficiency and make it more environment friendly. Today, I shall discuss Cassitex, a solution that will address these goals. Cassitex is introducing solar recharged battery shopping for electric last mile transport industry. Our customers will no longer buy batteries, but only pay for the energy they use to run their vehicles, thus creating opportunity for increased range and income. They will spend a maximum of US dollar 3.34 per day under this system. The market size is 1.5 million units of different types of electric three-wheelers used in public transportation and goods carrying. This is equivalent to US dollar 1.1 billion as it's easy to operate and no driving license required, millions of these captured the market easily. Our beached market is six-seater electric three-wheelers called auto or easy bike. Other segments have variable needs, making their acquisition difficult. Also, high adoption in this segment will convince others to join as well as create new segments. At Cassitex, we will ensure 67% more mileage and 110% more income to our customers. This is achieved by eliminating the need of owning and managing batteries. Currently, in plugging charging of lead acid batteries, it takes 10 to 12 hours. With Cassitex, it will only take 3 minutes to get fully charged batteries. Not only time is saved, but also energy is always available. By swapping multiple times a day, it can, they can achieve 200 km daily range. And as we manage the batteries, so drivers don't need to do maintenance or replacement. All of these results increased in daily income. Cassitex is a subscription-based service. Operators will sign up to integrate their vehicles with our technology. Pre-charged batteries will be available through biometrics access. Shopping stations calculate the energy used and the operators will pay through mobile banking. The service is available 24 hours. To better understand our customers, we have interviewed more than 20 operators in my hometown, Rangpur. The success of Castex is built on few assumptions. Firstly, will the operators be okay not to own batteries? Secondly, do the operators actually want to drive more kilometers per day? Lastly, Will the availability of pre-charged batteries make it cheaper to run these vehicles? We found some key information from these operators. For example, currently many operators use cheap but illegal charging solution. This is going to be a challenge for us. But the government is increasing pressure to stop this illegal activity. Opening a door for alternative solutions. Also, running multiple vehicles for more mileage is getting harder due to increased registration fees. Some customers have tried battery rentals, but due to battery weight, it's not, it's only limited to emergency uses. Our calculations show that Cassitex business can be self-sustaining and profitable. Key elements such as cost of land for each station and price of the battery soft for operator will dictate whether it can remain in profit or not. By targeting a market share of 25% of the 1 million passenger vehicle market, Cassitex can make a profit of 11.2 million US dollar in a year. Transportation sector is the third largest CO2 emitting industry. Cassitex eliminates the need for at least 250,000 vehicles to depend on the fossil fuel driven national grid. As batteries are charged with 100% solar, we are reducing all the CO2 emissions. The Cassitex teams include me, Gopal, and two of my partners. We are determined to make the transport sector emission free. As electric vehicles are already dominating the last mile transportation market, we dream of making it the most efficient choice of transport through mass adoption of Cassitex solar battery swapping solutions. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you, Team Cassitex, uh, for presenting their pitch. Uh, now we will move to our questioning session. Um, I will ask our jury members to ask Team Cassitex uh, if they have any questions regarding their presentation. Uh, sir, please, if you have any questions, please ask to the team member uh, of Team Cassitex. Uh, and team member of Team Cassitex, please be ready and listen carefully what our jury members are asking you.
uh, one question yeah, I have. Yeah. Hi, yes, may I go first? Okay. So yes, one sir. question I have is, you know, it's anticipating a nationwide uh, solar, uh, you know, operation, solar powered operation. So what would be the initial investment requirement or, you know, even to achieve like uh, 50, 60% coverage, uh, what would be the investment requirement? And what is your plan to raise that investment? That is not very clear from the pitch. Um, thank you. Uh, the, the pitch format didn't allow us to give the, uh, uh, the investment uh, numbers. So uh, this is Tosif. I'm one of the uh, sort of team members at Petsit. Uh, we are looking at about uh, 10 to 12,000 uh, USD per station uh, uh, for, uh, for deploying one station. Uh, our plan is uh, that uh, from zero to 10 stations, we would be uh, self-financing it. Or if at this point we get an, an angel investor at this point, uh, we will work together. Uh, for uh, more than uh, sort of 10 to 100, we are looking at uh, NGO or donor driven uh, sort of funding. Uh, for 10 to 500 stations, we are thinking about equity, uh, raising equity investment. Uh, either from the public sector or from, from private investors. Uh, from 500 to 1,000 stations, we are looking at uh, government subsidies plus uh, selling the stations to sort of uh, private landowners. Um, and then from 1,000 to 5,000 stations and beyond that, we are looking at OEM partnerships. For example, we know that there are some three-wheeler uh, manufacturers that are setting up plants. So we lo we're looking at partnerships with these uh, vehicle OEMs in order to build these stations along with their uh, sales network. Noted, thanks. I have a question. Hello? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma yeah, please ask. Yes, how do you plan to optimally place these stations? What's your selection criteria? So oh, we're, we're looking at two possible uh, strategies. One is that if there is already an empty sort of lot that somebody has not used it for any other purpose like a shop or, or a warehouse. So we are looking at that sort of uh, real estate. Uh, our solution does not require uh, the entire space to be utilized. Uh, although we, we need about 400 square feet uh, of space, only about 12% is used for the actual sort of station. The rest of it is just sort of a solar panel. Um, apart from that, we are also looking at uh, sort of four or five story or 10 story buildings where the solar panels can be placed on top of the rooftop and the station can be then placed somewhere in the, in the garage. Uh, we don't need much space for the, uh, the station itself. Uh, one thing, uh, I mean, a related question. So your panels need to be placed where uh, you know adequate solar irradiation is received, also your stations should be a place where you know it's accessible by those uh, car owners or drivers, right? Right. Okay, I have one question, uh, Tausif. Yes. Um, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, the question is that: uh, Did you uh, come up with any uh, KPI, for example? What is the cost of uh, deployment per hour of the battery? You know, when you rent it out, and uh, you know the um, the price that will be charging your customers. Um, yes. You know, per hour or per day. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so we have uh, three three pricing segments. Uh, the yeah. first is uh, when they are joining our network. Uh, they have a one-time uh, no exit uh, sort of uh, no exit barrier fee, which is a subscription fee. We will have a different name for it when we go to the market. Uh, so that's a subscription fee of around uh, USD uh, 230, sorry, just a second, 236. Um, and then once they're onboarded into the technology, we have an electricity price of USD 0.05 uh, per kilowatt hour of energy consumed. So that's roughly around uh, five taka. Um, and then for every swap that they do for the battery, uh, they will be paying us zero, USD 0 0.6, roughly around uh, 55 taka. I see, it seems like it unpacks a lot of value, your system. 
what is the cost of the competition? If they did not have uh, cassettex in place, uh, how much more they would be paying? You know, how, how do they profit by uh, buying your service? That's the question. Right, so there are two ways. For example, I, I must start with the existing price uh, of the lead acid battery. So whenever somebody buys a new vehicle, they are uh, also spending on the batteries and the lead, currently lead acid batteries are around 50 to 55,000 taka for the whole set. Uh, what we are charging them is roughly around 20,000 taka for the one, as a one-time subscription fee. So immediately from the get-go, they are reduced by around 30,000 taka. Uh, and then, for lead acid batteries, there, is, uh, there are a couple of issues. For example, there, are, there is a replacement cost every uh, 10 to 12 months. And then there are also the weekly maintenance costs, which is every week they have to top up the, the liquid and then they have to ensure that the, the battery surroundings are not uh, sort of corroded due to the acid leakage. So there's a lot of uh, cost buildup that happens in lead acid battery usage that eventually also, it, hampers the, the, the vehicle condition as well. So maybe every two, three months, they have to repair the vehicle as well. So all of these costs are sort of uh, offset when they come on board into our uh, system. Okay. So uh, any, any, can you give me a number? What's the cost difference? Uh, the cost difference between? I mean, uh, between uh, if they went alone, that is if they actually purchase the battery as opposed to using your service. Uh, if they were going to purchase the battery, that would be right, right. Uh, uh, around fifty to sixty thousand taka. Uh, that's what right, they're right. paying right now, and that is something that they pay every. I, I, what I meant is like cost of usage. That uh, if they used your your system and did not buy their own batteries, how much right. would they be saving? What savings would be there for the uh, auto rickshaw operators? Uh, they would be saving uh, up to. Uh, this is a figure that. We, uh, I'm sorry, sir, we don't have this exact information at the moment because the, right. the model is different. But we are, what we are saying is that there is going to be an increase in their income and increase in range due to... Uh, due of course, to that, yeah. that's, that's that's where they'll they, be making more money. They will yeah. make more. That's where the savings yeah, because, come, comes in, basically. Right, right. Okay, great. I got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I have no more questions. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for asking uh, questions, all the jury members. Uh, we will go to our second team as uh, we already have um, some time shortages. Uh, but uh, if jury boards are interested for knowing the teams, I think we can arrange some one-to-one -one, uh, uh, understanding later on with the teams if they want to help them or advise them with something like feedbacks. Uh, so let's move on to our next team, the team Ipco Raps. Uh, and uh, we will start with their presentation at the beginning and then just like this, the questions from our jury board. Let me just play the presentation, video presentation of Team Ikura. One million people die due to plastic pollution each year. And that is almost equal to the number of human deaths due to road accidents. Plastic pollution has been that deadly. The single-use plastic that we only use for a few minutes wanders in the nature for more over 100 to 1000 years. Wherever it goes, it spreads harmful microplastics, kills marine animals and is liable for 3.8% of all carbon emissions. Thus, it goes without saying that single-use plastic must be reduced at any cost. The recent ban on single-use plastic have put the businesses into trouble to use single-use plastics to protect the goods. And all of these problems need a solution. So as a solution to this alarming problem, we decided to come up with our product, EcoApps, which is an eco-friendly alternative to primary packaging. It is made using modified cellulose extracted from cotton fabric scraps, which are being thrown away in abundance from the ready-made garment industries of Bangladesh. As our beachhead market, we've chosen the green garments of Bangladesh, comprising of a market volume of about 5 million US dollars. Initially, we'll be focusing on this market for the first two years of our venture. Then, we'll be slowly expanding to the other markets like the super shops, online platforms, retail stores, and the other shopping malls. By the end of 2025, we'll be 
focusing on the global retail and shopping mall chains with a market size of more than 1 billion US dollars, as you can see over here. Our product is more affordable compared to our nearby competitors since we are using waste as a raw material. The customers will be able to maintain legal and environmental compliance and also get the opportunity to get some green accreditation. Through these measures, the green garments can claim higher margins from fashion brands on their products, thus creating a win-win situation. So far, we have created two types of products, which are apparel packaging and the shopping bags. These products can be produced in conventional machinery. The modified cellulose produced from the fabric scraps is a key to our innovation. These fabric scraps are readily available in the market with a established supply chain and a yearly output of about 700,000 tons. Also, the patent to our unique process is right now pending. When we had reaching out to our WeChat market, we thought our customers would be attracted to buy our product only for climate benefits and green awareness. But when we got to interview them in person, several other benefits of green practices came out as discussions, which are big brands such as H&M, Uniqlo, etc. are already looking for alternative of conventional plastic. And by green practices, these garment industries can get accreditation, also they can claim higher margin from their foreign buyers. Compared to conventional plastic, our product can save around 4.98 to 5.5 kilograms of carbon dioxide for each kilogram of bioplastic produced. Besides, clogging our drainage, blocking of landfills, and water pollution by conventional plastics will be reduced if we use our ones as an alternative. Through this venture, we'll be able to cover the following four sustainable development goals. At the fifth year of our operation, we expect to acquire at least 34 B2B customers from our beachhead market, with each customer having an average yearly demand of 1.12 million pieces. Our yearly turnover of delivery turns around 37.6 million pieces at the fifth year. Through this, we expect to earn a revenue of 4.47 million US dollars with a gross profit of 1.97 million US dollars. The founding team consists of three persons. Myself, Yasad Zaman, currently looking after the production side. My teammate, Rashik, is responsible for the business development and supply chain, while Ashwat is looking after strategy and finance. Having these three founders with three different skill sets enables us to take care of our business holistically. By the fifth year, our dream is to reach our eco-friendly packaging to at least 30 consumer brands. Through this, we expect to be providing at least 500 jobs and achieve an annual turnover of 4.47 million US dollars by the year 2025. We are not only dreaming, we are also relentlessly working on product certification, product development and market research so that someday our dreams may come true. Lastly, we believe that sustainability is more than just buying eco. It's an unshakable commitment towards a sustainable future. Join eco apps to build bold businesses for a better planet. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Team Ecorap, uh, for presenting uh, their business. Uh, now I will ask our honorable jury members uh, to ask questions if they have any to our uh, Team Ecorap. Sir, if any of Hi. you have any questions. Yes, Carrie. I have a I question. Think. Yes, what do the bags decompose to? Because we can assume that people will still discard these bags. So have you looked at how they decompose? Well, uh, basically, in case of decomposing, if it's uh, composted in a composting facility, it decomposes to carbon dioxide and water. And apart from that, uh, if it ends up in, if it unluckily uh, ends up in a landfill, then what's going to happen, just like any other discarded tomato or apple, it will uh, generate methane and water. Methane, methane gas in landfills. Um. Sorry, uh, one question I had is uh, these discarded fabrics obviously are collected and today we see that uh, there's a, a drive for, uh, you know, circular fashion that yeah. you use these things and, you know, produce fabric. So uh, you definitely, you know, have a competition, although you are waste, you know, using waste. So if you can give me some flavor on the unit economics that at a scale, how much would be your cost? to produce these bags uh, in comparison to the alternatives? Uh, sir, uh, in comparison to alternative plastics or fabrics? 
uh, plastic. To... I'm saying, you know. All right. So there are two two elements to it, right? Yeah. At what point, uh, price point you can sell it, whether it is you know competitive, and second, at what what price point you are you know what would be your procurement cost, whether it's attractive enough uh, to the alternative usage. So may I answer this question? So first of all, comparing to our competition, our price is thirty three percent lower, and then again in terms of production cost. Uh, we can get higher efficiency and uh, it is even double because we are with, using waste materials and these cotton fabrics have 91% cellulose, whereas our competitions uh, use, uh, let's say, jute or starch, which from them, uh, from that, they can at least, uh, they can at best uh, gain 50% efficiency. In that case, we are 41% more efficient. That's, uh, that's how we are being cheap and also the raw materials that we are we're, we're using is dirt cheap. That's also another reason for us to be, be cheap. But, uh, sorry, I'm, I'll jump in with last question of mine, but it's not question, it's a comment that, you know, this jute, I mean, the waste fabric uh, market is, uh, you know, very competitive and, uh, you, you know, it's driven by local hoodlum. So it's, you know, just yes, be sir. cognizant of the challenges of collecting that. Okay, all right, thanks. Yes, sir. Um, sir, just to add, we actually went to the jute poly and over there we saw the current price they are actually selling. If we even offer a higher price, at least over a 20% margin than the current rate they're buying, still they are going to make a lot of profit and still at that price range, it's going to be still very cheap for us as well. And considering that we did our pricing and already producing few samples as well and still it's profitable for us. So both the parties are happy with the pricing. Okay, good to get that. Thanks. Explain. Uh, is there any comparisons uh, that you made uh, per, per unit of your 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 production cost in comparison to the other available plastic bags? Uh, sir, as in available conventional plastics or bioplastics? Uh, just conventional plastics. Sir, our cost is a little bit higher compared to the conventional plastics. It is due to our, the type of our raw materials. It is totally plant-based and natural, and which is not more than 1.5 times compared to the conventional plastics. This is due to we have, uh, we are all, as we have already said that we are using a raw materials which is uh, yeah, exactly. can be get in a dirt cheap rate. And sir, okay. just to add, when we were talking with our stakeholders, the fashion brands or the RNG garments, and the value we are offering, that is far higher than the extra little bit increase in the price compared to the conventional plastics. So the garment owner, they're actually willing to pay a small increase in price for the much higher value they can sell as the eco-friendly biodegradable product they will be exporting to the Europeans or the US market. All right. That that, that sounds reasonable. If it is a, a bit a bit extra, that sounds reasonable. All right, good. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, hello, Haya. Hello, Shojib here. Shojib. Your Out voice there is not clear. For presenting and also on. Okay. Shojib, Hello, uh, Shojib uh, can you please restart from the beginning the, at the moment you started because everything was breaking down. So from exactly okay, beginning. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Extremely sorry. Uh, I think because of the internet connectivity, uh, it had happened. Um, so thank you, Team EcoRap, and also the juries uh, uh, for uh, presentation and asking questions. Now we will move to our next team, Team Farminiers. Uh, first of all, I will share their presentation. They have made uh, the video presentation, and, and the juries will ask them. So here we come with their presentation.
the year of 2015 my aunt zaria begum was diagnosed with cancer doctor suggested to serve her garden fresh vegetables in a time when toxic poisons like formalin had become standard food preservative it was impossible for us to provide the fresh food her body needed we had to travel 3 hours to collect detoxicated food from a rather suburban area my aunt survived the journey but the lack of fresh food in the city had become my concern from the abyss of worry i alone with my very same enthusiastic teammates came up with the idea of producing fresh food in my house and from being a concerned youth we restored our hope and become entrepreneurs to construct a business that will solve the fresh food crisis with the motto of eat healthy live green farmers started its journey so what do we do how do we do this as urban people we feel the necessity and presenting you farmers we provide fresh vegetables and fishes to you from our soilless and advanced rooftop farm you can have foods directly delivered to your doorsteps with the customizable weekly subscription imagine fresh and pesticide free foods from your own rooftops and you can have hands on experience of on farm shopping too the urban families of dhaka and chaturam city are our beachhead market and we envision expanding our market gradually so why would customers buy our products with the motto of eat healthy and live green farmers use aquaponics as core farming methods which is a proven method of zero chemical harvesting even one drop of the hazardous element can destroy the whole system of vegetables and fish production we are offering a database of product history to make sure you know the details of what you have on your table we are selling our products at the same market price as we have up to four times more production rate than the traditional system our food traveled through the shortest supply chain from plants to reach your table we promise to provide the best quality foods in the cities with our constant research to make our customers healthy and happy we set out to discover our potential customers and re interview them to find their needs we are surprised that urban people are daily in need of fresh foods the building owners are eager to have our farm as it is a win win situation for them too our projected financial in the fifth year will be making 14000 euro delivering fresh foods to our beachhead market with a market share of 70% our rooftop farms can have a huge climate impact it can reduce 12000 tons of carbon dioxide from the city environment research shows cities having enough rooftops firm can reduce its temperature up to 4 degrees celsius our farming system has 95% water circulation which saves water compared to traditional farming rooftop firm is the key to unlock our dream of green cities So this is our team empowered by the engineering agricultural and business expertise we dream to turn our green cities and livable we want to reach 1 million urban families within 5 years and provide guaranteed fresh foods to urban people our advisory and think tank are guiding us to achieve our dream let's eat healthy and live green so uh, may i uh, ask the first question <clears throat> okay
okay yes. please go ahead sir yes uh, uh, i fail to see a revenue model like exactly how are you going to make money i mean i can understand the technology but uh, uh, are you going to sell the system to the rooftop owners or are you i mean how are how are you going to um, um, are you going to collect the vegetables and then resell it well, how how does it work Exactly. May I answer, sir? Hello, sir. I am Iftikhar from Farming. So I will be taking Thank the lead. So okay. first of all, we will be going to the building owners for their rooftops, and we will be setting up our farm in the rooftop. Later on, when the food is being produced, we will be selling the food to our customers. So that's how our business model works. So in the meanwhile, we will be partnering or having some deals with the building owners actually because we will be using their rooftops. So that's how we. Engineer our business model. Will you be charging the building owners for uh, setting up the, uh, no, you know, rooftop? No, sir. We because be, we ourselves will be setting up the farm and right. we'll be taking I, I, I a lease. It. Basically, we'll be taking a lease okay. from the from the building owner. So all the income will be made from the sale of vegetables. From these vegetables uh, and point. vegetables and fishes, sir. As it's a aquaponics okay. farm, we can also produce fishes here. I see. Have you done any costing? How much you can sell the produce for, and how much you can? Uh, what is the cost? Yes, what's sir. The we have a in? costing model ready, but uh, we couldn't add it here, so I'll be telling you. We have a okay. really high fixed price because it's a pretty very much uh, sophisticated engineering model so we have a fixed cost of around $2100 usd and so this is our fixed cost and our variable cost every year will be around 675 us dollar and but the whole thing is that we will be having an income around 3000 us dollar because the aquaponics gives you mean at least uh, nearly four times high production rate so that's how we get into the production into the High profitability, and we will be reaching our break even in just nearly a year. Basically, I don't have any more questions. Thank you. Thank you, Thank sir. You. All right, so I have a small question. Yes, sir. Uh, do you think that uh, the since all these buildings of Dhaka City has basically the apartment condo are uh, at the condominiums, do you think the management of the building will be willing to, from the social context, will be willing to uh, rent you the uh, rooftop spaces? Well, have you we, thought about it? We have talked to some of the building owners while we talked about uh, profit sharing or taking the lease from them. Some of them agreed, but there is also a notion that in Uttar, Uttar Dhaka City Corporation, uh, they are probably going to end something like green tax or something, where if you have a rooftop farm in your uh, building, then you will have to be charging less. So there is an opportunity that uh, in just a few years, I think there will be boom in these uh, expectations. And also, as we have talked to some building owners, they were pretty interested uh, giving, uh, providing that uh, we are giving them enough uh, money actually to lease that property. All right, that's fine. Uh, one comment from my side. I mean, if you are thinking that you'll get leases on these uh, uh, you know, rooftops and you'd produce and you'd get those produce out, so there is a risk that, you know, apartment owners or any tenant can, you know, harvest those without your permission. That's one risk element I see. Also, this requires a lot of upfront investment, right? Uh, so I have not seen any urban farming model getting funded because if you have to scale it, it would require a lot of funding. And so uh, have you considered that? First of all, we'll have some people for maintenance, someone for around five to six buildings so that he can go out and check them out. And we will have a very highly engineered model so that we can monitor everything. Else. So that's how we look at the maintenance issue. And secondly, about the funding, we are currently talking to some real estate companies uh, who are pretty much willing to fund us here. But due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, there is a you know break in this dealing. So we are hoping to get funding in this year or later. Okay, now I'm saying that if you have to scale it to a significant extent, it would require like uh, venture capital funding and all. So I have not seen urban, any urban funding, uh, urban farming model getting funded yet. 
region this actually this is not something that has been happening for a longer time so this entire thing is quite new so i think that's how uh, the real estate can embrace this technology and this start uh, this type of startups okay thank you sir is there time for another question if not i can move on okay uh, if you have a question we can add uh, entertain it i'm just i don't quite understand how the 12000 tons of co2 per year are being saved i know you're recycling water and you have no soil inputs and no chemical fertilizers but how are you saving that much co2 well, we have estimated there are 12 million people in Dhaka and Chittagong city. So we have calculated the number of families and number of buildings that we can reach. So there are some research papers that tells us how much uh, carbon dioxide can be, uh, can be reduced from a particular area. So we have just basically roughly calculated those numbers. Okay, thank you, uh, Team Farmenius. Uh, I think we do not have any other questions from the jury members. Uh, so we will uh, now move on to our next team, uh, Team RE3. Uh, we'll move to their presentation and then we'll go through the jury board questions for them. So let me just share the videos first. And just a reminder that when you answer, try to keep your videos on. How do you feel when you're asked to take out the trash in your home? More importantly, how many people in Bangladesh actually do dispose of their trash properly? RE3 Recycling Technology has found a way to help you turn the extremely distasteful activity of disposing your plastic trash into an opportunity for you to avail benefits while saving the environment. So what's our deal? We will recycle and sell high-grade plastic pellets to companies at $2 or 170 BDT. What's our market segmentation? We have chosen plastic packaging companies like soft drinks or mineral water as our beached market. We will provide them with the required plastic packaging recycled from the selective waste that we collect. A 45% share in this market will yield us a revenue of $10 million. From here, we want to move on to the companies that produce high-quality plastic products. Then in five years to the export market, which is more than a $200 million market where we can generate close to $100 million in revenues. Let's talk about our product. RE3 has an app through which users can take picture of their daily plastic waste. The app will automatically scan for reusable plastic of value. Users then deposit the recyclable plastic at the nearest collection point specified by the app to earn an incentive. Every day we accumulate the waste from different collection points and convert it to plastic pellets of various qualities. Using this process of incentivizing general population gives us edge over our competitors. Our supply stream is unlimited. Sorting and collecting costs are significantly reduced since our suppliers with the help of the app already do that for us. It is also cheaper than imported products due to lower transportation cost and taxes. Going into this idea, we had a few key assumptions that companies tend to import majority of their plastic materials. We assumed the market price of the current materials that companies use. We also assumed that sorting and collection costs of existing local companies are high. To get our answers, we interviewed 20 potential customers and studied some of our competitors. We found that companies do import their plastic materials incurring high transport and tax cost. High sorting cost affects the product price for the local companies. Our prices are compatible with the existing competitors. Additionally, we found that the Bangladesh government has started to ban single-use plastics to limit plastic pollution, making the recycling market more viable in the coming future. From our financial slide, we can have a look at our estimated profits and the key drivers that highly impact it. We estimate a profit of around $493 per ton of plastic pellets. We estimate a production of 20,000 tons of product each year for our 45% market. Combining these factors, we estimate a final profit of around $10 million per annum. We consider the key drivers in this calculation to be the net selling price, the market size, and the amount of product we sell in each deal to a customer. 
Now, most importantly, what is our climate impact? Around 800,000 ton tons of plastic waste is generated every year in Bangladesh, of which around one-fourth is dumped directly in a different kinds of water bodies. Our goal is to recycle up to 100,000 tons of this plastic waste, which will cut down the water pollution by 50%. According to research, per ton of white plastic can generate up to 2.9 tons of equivalent carbon, whereas recycled plastic generates only 172 kilos meaning we can reduce carbon emission up to 94 percent so what's our value proposition in terms of pricing sorting raw materials and transporting them we have a clear edge over our competitors in addition to that our product is highly scalable and using our product can boost the image of our customers as an eco-friendly company let's look at our team we have akib Muhammad khan as the co-founder and head of operations Muhammad shahid al-islam as a co-founder and head of marketing, and me, Ali Fashrafi, the CEO and co-founder. So what's our dream? To use innovation in technology to help Bangladesh in reducing plastic pollution, to become the largest plastic recycling company in Bangladesh, to be able to yield at least 100,000 tons of recycled usable plastic every year, and also to achieve ISO certification for our recycled plastic. So that is us, RE3 Recycling Technology. Thank you for your time. Uh, hi, if anyone else, is, I mean, I may I jump first? So one question is that, you know, this requires a significant behavioral change, right? From the yeah. suppliers, right? Uh, whoever who is supplying you the households and other waste generators, they have to, you know, scan and they have to send you notifications, whereas they can now, you know, discard it, uh, their regular garbage collector collected, they would sort it at their facility and they would, you know, do whatever is required. So that's one element. So it's very difficult to induce behavioral change in people. Second thing that, you know, what is the climate innovation here? Anyway, this plastic are used to, you know, you know, the discarded plastics are collected mostly, and those are converted to plastic pallets and mostly are exported. So we don't have uh, you know, we have few PET, uh, you know, facilities that can use these uh, uh, flakes and uh, reproduce plastic in the country because it's us usually due to, uh, you know, heavy investment requirements that we don't have this many facilities. So it used to go to China and nowadays it goes to Vietnam and it, you know, it's uh, recycled and, you know, come back to Bangladesh, most likely cases. So. These are two elements. One is inducing behavioral change is very difficult. And this, how this is a climate innovation because these plastics are anyway being used, uh, you know, reused uh, in some manner. Yes, sir. Uh, so initially uh, what we thought of is that the, almost all the ways that people have in their houses, they actually don't uh, care to get anything in return for it. So most of the time we see that in urban areas, people just uh, throw away the trash without uh, sort of thinking about what's uh, going to be the impact for it. So we want to change the behavior in such a way that we want to provide them an incentive through the app. So when, when they're actually donating the plastic instead of throwing it away, they will be receiving a sort of uh, uh, virtual currency through the app. With that, they can actually avail more products from our uh, customer company, like a sort of a discount or a voucher coupon that they can further use uh, instead of using their actual currency. So that way we are trying to uh, motivate them more towards donating the plastic to us instead of just throwing it away in a, a normal place. So that's kind of going to affect the behavior of change, I hope. And the next thing is, uh, yes, uh, there are uh, mostly companies who import plastic. So as you said, Bangladesh does not actually produce a PET cover. Like that actually incurs to the higher cost. Like Bangladesh has about 200,000 uh, plastic pellets, uh, 200,000 tons of plastic plastic that is actually dumped into the rivers every year. So uh, that is actually based on a research paper uh, from Hakka University. So using that plastic can actually benefit us in two ways. So first of all, we do not have to export the plastic and instead we can just use it here uh, locally because that actually cuts down the import cost uh, that the companies currently have to pay to bring that plastic over. So if a local company is giving them the plastic without having to pay for that uh, import cost, I think that is, that is a much cheaper alternative. And also, 
when you say about the climate impact, uh, creating virgin plastic, as we mentioned, actually takes up to 2.9 uh, tons of uh, CO2 equivalent uh, when we produce only one ton of plastic. But recycling plastic only takes 172 kilograms of uh, CO2 equivalent. So that's actually a 94% drop in terms of carbon emissions. You know, my comment was, I mean, the most of the plastic which are recyclable, like yeah. bottles and all, are getting more recycled today. So, I mean, your innovation is using an app and get track the garbage and collect it and sort it. So, this app is a environment, I mean, innovation that helps the environment. That's what, That was my question. Anyway, uh, I think if there's any other question from other jury members. So if uh, I could talk, uh, I think it's uh, pretty clear about the app. So, uh, the app is basic, the app basically uh, works as an image classifier. So um, it uses a neural network to uh, classify uh, the various types of plastic. So that helps the sorting process. So as a result, the, uh, as a result, we, we don't incur the, the cost that is incurred by the normal conventional way of in that way, I think uh, we are cheaper. I have a question also about, I mean, the app sounds fantastic and so does the, the amount of plastic you're able to recycle and save, but the behavior change does feel like a sticking point. What are the incentives that you're offering to these people yes. to make them change their behaviors? Right. So initially, we want to place, uh, say, some vending machines across shopping malls. So instead uh, of throwing away these plastic bottles, uh, like just normal, these small things that we throw away every day on the streets, or uh, if you if you've seen the pictures of Dhaka, like there's a lot of trash all around. So we want to start with giving people uh, a sort of price or gift, like a discount. Say you're throwing away a Coke bottle, but instead if you give give that Coke bottle to us. In the next Coke that you buy from Coca-Cola, you will get a say, 10 percent discount. So we are actually going to partner with our customer companies, whatever is going to be. And through our app, our users can actually buy those products using those discounts. So uh, we want to make it more cost efficient for the customers. And at the same time, those products are actually being advertised through the app at the same time. So our customer companies will also be benefited. Thank you. Um, uh, can I add something? Is there any other question? Uh, may I add something? Uh, I don't think we need uh, any addition to this question answer because uh, uh, it, it, it's regarding Nad Musa's question. Uh, I think that you have answered twice uh, that question. So let us just move on, please. Yeah. Uh, so if no, none other, no other jury has any questions, we will move to our next team. Our next team is uh, Team Shobu Shohor. So let me just, uh, they will present their presentation at the beginning and then they will also face the question answer sessions from the juries. So let's uh, move on to their presentation first. I was born and brought up in a city so an amazing and vibrant. Ironic, but sad that the city has given me gardens of beautiful memories, lakes, gardens, and green itself. I feel so sad when I see my city ranks number one day after day being the city having the worst air quality index. I feel so hopeless when I see the report telling Dhaka has only 10% of greenery being a mega city. We are surrounded by skyscrapers and the unused rooftop take about the 70% scale space of Dhaka city. On the other hand, my country, Bangladesh, tops the list among South Asian countries for food health rations and more than 4.5 million people in the country are at a health risk, consuming adulterated food every single day. And all the scenarios shook us heavily and we took the challenge to convert the spaces into resources and come up with an idea which will be contributing a potential solution for almost all the problems I have mentioned so far. So, here we go. 
Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope all of you are doing well. I am Sheikh Rakib Sharari man and today I am introducing you to Shobut Shahor. Shahor Bashi Shobure Tashi Hood Purpose is to service customer with healthy, fresh food using unused and available spaces while making an impact to the climate. Our deal is simple. We cultivate fruits and vegetables on rooftop and sell them fresh as customizable packages and at an average rate of 1000 taka. Our total possible market is the people of entire Bangladesh who belongs to the upper middle class and above and prefer organic food. Being a scalable business, it is possible for us to serve about more than 2 lakh families belong to the targeted class in the urban and suburban areas of Bangladesh. Considering the divisional cities and city corporations like Chittagong, Silet, Rashahi, we have a potential market of almost 5 lakh people consisted 1.2 lakh families. Our beaten market consists of the people just like Mr. Hassan who belongs to the upper middle class, prefer organic food and health conscious. And only in Dhaka city we have 50,000 potential customers like him and by 2027 we will be able to obtain 30% of the market with production capacity of 75,000 packages which is our beaten market. Customers owning building have the opportunity of extra income renting us their rooftop for cultivating fresh and adulterated organic foods in the cities. We also buy both inorganic waste to build cultivation infrastructure on the rooftop and organic waste to use as fertilizer from city dwellers. We rent unused rooftop by making partnership with the building owners and cultivate fresh foods and vegetables which is our final product. We cultivate using modern technologies like hydroponic process, cocoa-based soil, and automated irrigation system. And due to the abundance of resources, our business is highly scalable. Our key business assumptions were our customers would provide prefer both online and offline services. Our average pricing is aligned with the customer's weekly expense, and cultivating is one cultivating in one one place is a dependable solution. And interviewing 22 customers, we learned that our customers will still prefer offline services over online. Most customers spend less than Taka 1300 behind organic food weekly which aligned with our pricing assumptions and yes, they found self-cultivation as the best solution for managing organic and fresh food. By the year 2027, we will be able to obtain 90 lakh Takas by acquiring 30% share of the market with our key drivers being the product life and the scalability of production. The shorter lifespan of the product will cost frequent purchase and the number of sales will be eventually higher as it is a daily needed commodity. We live in a city where every year it makes the number one position in respect to air pollution, especially during the winter. So if we use the rooftop for planting and cultivating, the amount of CO2 will drop by 144,000 tons and additional of 540,000 tons of oxygen will be released in the air. An amazing team behind the scene, my chef is doing the research and developing our products and services. Shadia Shezin is working for conveying our value to the customer and Sophie Donaim is working with the numbers and I, Rakit Riemann, is making a strategy to scale up our business. Our dream is to make the cities noticeably greener and constantly innovate to upgrade our service and being a business, this will let us reach to a figure of 2.5 million VDD in terms of revenue by the next three years only. We want to bring a revolutionary and sustainable change on city life by utilizing existing resources. Come join our crusade. It's time to bring a change and it is time to go greener. You must not jump on a bandwagon, but when it is Shobu Shahor, I guess you don't want to miss the chance of joining the cohort of making the cities a greener and a better place to live in. Thank you so very much. Uh, now I uh, will go to our honorable jury members if they have any questions. Sir, please. If any of our jury members have any questions to Team Shobu Shahar, sir, please. Uh, one question I had that uh, while urban farming might save uh, you know i mean might help the environment in terms of co2 em emission but you know urban areas are also you know mired in traffic jams so uh, logistic is a great problem uh, you know rather than getting it produced in a vast area and transporting it to dhaka and vis-a-vis -vis you you are collecting it from you know small you know in many places uh navigating the urban traffic uh have in your 
calculation have you considered that element uh, in terms of you know co2 emission uh, that you know your logistic uh, logistics of and getting these producers uh, from every nook and corner of the city would also you know compound the co2 emission uh, in some way and have you come up with a net calculation of that or you know uh, thank you sir for your question definitely this uh, we have to consider the things that we are doing some firm when we bring the products uh, by the transportations we have but we believe that the amount of co2 we, it can be reduced through the uh, gardenings in all the cities and areas and all the amounts of places we have it is a very good trade off so rather than just uh, playing on the vehicles let's not let's use it for a better cause so that is that was our belief and perception sir i have one question uh, the question is uh, already you know many chain grocery stores like agora and uh, shopno and they are trying to add a organic vegetable shelf or organic vegetable sort being introduced by them and they are also trying to um, bolster the market in rural bangladesh and obtain this uh, products from trying to um, stimulate organic farming in villages and other places so uh, that's the competition and a formidable competition because they have an outlet right so uh, what about that you know how can you compete with mina bazar agora and uh, shopno uh, they also have the financial backing uh, probably are reliable uh, pairs to farmers as well so this is one one question another is have you thought about uh, approaching them or uh, having some sort of uh, agreement or collaboration or alliance with them to join forces or uh, maybe capture value from uh, from this uh, activity that they are uh, considering so that is the same question i i mean having two sides that's that's what i have for yes, you yes sir thank you so very much for your question uh, my answer is like uh, from our readings of our, the consumer inside our consumer behavior of the consumption of organic foods and vegetables we have that is the customers who go to who prefer organic food they either go to mina bazar shopno or all the super malls or they uh, uh, go to kawran bazar or such uh, one to reliable places in dhaka city so so far we have this organic product is is becomes a i mean the premium product in our customer mind the people who have a very uh, that type of capacity does but our cause is to our believe is to make it a reliable source because when you go in karan bazar you kind of have a belief that it came from the farming house or direct from the uh, i mean the farmers hand but we actually produce this in front of you in your rooftop in the rooftop of your business or anything else so that you have a reliable source of organic food and our pricing model is just a bit lower than the shopno mina bazar and other competitors so that we can be more reliable and and we can be more i mean our pricing strategy is a bit less premium so that people other than the pre- who cannot afford the premium products or the afford the or i mean the prevalent organic food they can achieve themselves also so we have a kind of a competitive mode with them other than some agreements uh, with them in this case sir Thank you for your answer. I have no more questions. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I believe that uh, we have uh, no other questions from our jury board. Uh, so let's uh, proceed on with the next session. As we have uh, completed all the presentations and question answer sessions of all our participating team, uh, now I will ask um, our moderator and the president uh, and founder of uh, Gen Lab. and also the country representative of climate launchpad 2020 ratul dev to um, start the closing session uh thank you mr shoji hasan for uh, conducting to uh, the pitching session and thanks to all our jury board members and all the teams um so what we do now is we go to breakout session breakout room and all our jury members and uh, our few of our organizing team will shift to breakout rooms and for in between 10 minutes 
maximum of 10 minutes, we get all the scores and uh, markings from our feedback from our jury board members. And the organizers will uh, take marks and decide uh, the champion team and uh, the other, other uh, team standings. Uh, but what happens in this 10 minutes, uh, we will be taking a short break. So the participants, you can take a 10 minutes of short break, but make sure that you come back within that time. And for those of you who are watching our Facebook Live, uh, uh, please stay with us and come back in 10 minutes. So the live will go on with some uh, breaking uh, video. And uh, I would like to request our honorable chief guest, uh, if Sar is here with us, Mr. Uh, Soyad Mazibul Haq. Yes. Sir, we will uh, take you to the uh, breakout uh, room as well. So. You can observe our uh, uh, jury board and you can also understand, uh, give your feedback if you have any. After that, uh, we will uh, bring you to the main room and continue our next session. So after the break, maximum we will have more 30 minutes and then our today's national trail will be over. So having said that, let's move to the breakout room. Uh, if I can have my teammates, uh, Safiya Tulmim, can you please take all our jury members and uh, yourself to the breakout room, please. Yes, Priya, within a minute. Only the jury members and uh, Mr. Mojibul Haq, our chief guest, and Shojib and Ishrat, and yourself. I will be here in the main room. I have already invited everyone, so everyone please just click yes and they can be on the room. Did you receive any invitation, Mim? I'm not sure if I'm going to be heard in the breakout room. Uh, I think that uh, the invitation has not been sent in long, ma'am. OK. Okay. Mim, can you uh, just invite everyone? I think the invitation uh, has not reached to any everyone.
All right, uh, guys, our honorable jury board member is taking a little more time, maybe, or the organizers. So I just wanted to chat with all our participants if you have any questions or feedback to us. Um, because organizing an online event this way was also our first time experience. There, there might be some mistakes from our end as well, or maybe if you have any feedback or anything from any of the team members, I would love to hear from you if there is any. Uh, Ratul Bhai. Hello. Hello, am I audible? Hello. Yeah, Naim. Yes, please. Yeah, one of my team members uh, was mistakenly removed from. Yeah, the... I, I got the got the text. Our our teammate will try to uh, accept her later on after the breakout session over. Because oh, when sure. the breakout goes on, we cannot do that. Sure, I I Thank did you. enter through another um, device. Thank you so much. All right. Done. Can I ask one by one, if I go to Tausib Bhai from Cassetex, Tausib Bhai, if you share any any feedback or anything anything you want to share with us, I, I, I would go to one by one to all of our team members, one representative at a time. If Tausib Bhai is here. Yeah, sorry. Uh... I think the uh, the jury the jury members can be. We are live uh, by, by the way. We are live in Facebook. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No problem. Um, I think the jury members uh, need some a little bit more time uh, to yeah. ask the questions. I think because some of it has some uh, uh, sort of background element, and also I think they they also need to be moderated because I think there were some jury members who wanted to ask questions but they didn't get the time to do that. Right. Perfect. Okay, we, I will take the feedbacks and maybe we'll be doing better in Bhutan and Myanmar, not in Bangladesh this um, Thank you. Um, actually, the, the, the official rule is three minutes. So as you know, we wanted to keep it as simple as that, but then again, it continued. So yeah, but we need to be more careful because the regional finale and of course the global finale will be very strict and they actually deduct marks based on this. Um, so thank you, Tosip Bhai. Uh, so can we have one from EcoRaps? Any feedback or question from EcoRap? Ashfaq or Riyasad? Um, hello, Bhaiya. So, so far it's been a great session. And of course, there are always some glitches considering the technicalities. So that's fine. Uh, one thing I think would have been a bit improved, like the time management. But yeah, as Gopal Bhai already said, so, and we need to follow the rules, but still it was great that an extended few seconds were also given. So, but we need to also prepare and keep it in mind for the next round as well, for the teams who will be progressing to the next rounds. Because it's very crucial that we are able to communicate everything under the three minutes so that both the parties are satisfied with the queries. So it's just an observation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Asfak. Uh, thank you. Um, and any question from Farmineers? Farmineers, if the car is not Fahim, anyone, please. Yeah. Hello, it's me, Prefer. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I have to go on, please. I think the lessons we learned, learned basically from uh, the boot camp, I think that was really amazing because that really helped us paving the way. Because whenever you have your idea, you need to structure it in some form. But in our country, there are hardly any scope for the startups to, you know, basically structurize their entire journey or how the way they will be pitching their ideas, they will be going on. So I think that's where Climate Launchpad 
did brilliant job and literally helped almost all the teams here, here going their journey. So I think um, it's not just more about who is winning or losing. I think it's more about learning how we can go forward. Because in a competition, you cannot let uh, you know everything to win. So one team is going to win and others are going to hold on. But I think a um, few years later, you will be seeing all these five teams making an impact in Bang, not just in Bangladesh, but also globally. So that's where I think Planet Launchpad made the biggest impact. And also thanks to Zen Lab Japan. Thank you, Iftekhar. Um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I personally attended a few of the offline events of Climate Launchpad, but this was the first time online. So I was even confused. Wow, how much can we offer or not? But since the network is already now here, I, I think in upcoming days when COVID is not here and we will be able to interact more and learn more. And uh, uh, by the way, uh, one of our judge, uh, Mr. Nazmul, uh, is, is from uh, one of the renowned angel investment firm. So if you can connect with him by any means, that might be better for you as well. Um, can we have anyone from team RE3, team RE3? Uh, hello. Yeah. Uh, from our side, I think uh, what we felt like that the judges were not much aware of the ideas before. We were told that they were supposed to see the pitched ideas beforehand, but it seemed like they were very confused initially because probably they were seeing this for the first time. So uh, it would be helpful if they could actually talk about this more like previously before the session started, actually. Yeah, thank you, RE3. Uh, just FYI, uh, I guess uh, it is based on the organizers and jury boards. Uh, we know well that if the judges were aware or not, our all judges are absolutely aware. That's why we collected your videos beforehand. So in online, maybe the way they ask question, some of you thought that they are not aware, but we already sat with them before this event and all these videos and everything, they have learned it thoroughly. So, but still, if that's an impression you got, we will communicate with our jury board, of course. Thank you. Um, anyone from Shobut Shahor, our one team is left from discussion. Anyone from Shobut Shahor? Saifullah Naim or Raki or Maisha? Uh, yes. Yeah, I one feed, one feedback I have for, for the overall journey that is when you had a bootcamp session, it would be mm -hmm. even better if all the members are included in the bootcamp so that they all get the same type of training or so. Basically, what we face is kind of the two were learning and others two were getting that and absorbing from what they have learned. So if basically it is a one to one session for all of us, that would be even better. And unless otherwise, that was an amazing journey. And it would be even better if we get to know each other in the physical state or even we can pitch our ideas or meet our investors and mentors. Uh, but uh, that is not in, uh, in our hands. So thank you for this uh, opportunity. And one question I would like to ask that what are the plans you have uh, uh, for investment or the further mentoring for the startups you have right now? Do you have any actually? Rakib, thank you so much. Yes, uh, about the bootcamp, we had to abide by the rules set by the headquarters, but it is also it was also our concern that it should be uh, more more connected with all team members. And about uh, the investment or other pitching, yes, after we are done with three of our country and the whole climate launchpad journey over, because we have some organize uh, the responsibility as an organizer, so we remain busy. So when all the national finale and global finale is over. We will connect you with few of the renowned investment firm in Bangladesh and hopefully for Bhutan and Myanmar as well. So there will be more follow-ups. Uh, I think uh, you don't have much to worry about it. Uh, thank you so much. Shoji, do you think we can move to our next session, next part of the event? If Shoji, me, or Ishrat, anyone is there?
It seems like our uh, jury board is taking a few more minutes. I just connected with them uh, through my phone. So maybe they will need two or three more minutes. Um, Rathul, if you, Rathul bhai, if it's okay, I have a question. Gigi, please. Uh, will the uh, jury members give us some kind of like a written evaluation or a feedback privately? Um, comments on, on the model or, or other, other aspects? Um, we haven't talked with them that way, but what I can do is uh, the champion team or the top three team, I will try to connect with them uh, one to one meeting so you can ask more questions and take feedback how, how you want to proceed to next round. That can be done. And if you want it urgently, I can do it before our regional finale. So I, I guess that can be done. Yes. And if you have any any jury particularly, do let me know after the event is over. So we will try. Sure. Okay. Thank you. We have one friend from Bhutan here. Pratika is here. Pratika, do you can you listen to us? Are you here? Hello. I guess our uh, jury members and our chief guest and everyone is back. So I hope we have uh, came to a perfect resolution of the breakout room and the results are in our hand. However, the result to be published a little later, we need 10 to 15 minutes more for the wrap up sessions. We will discuss uh, more with our jury or panel. So with permission from uh, Soyad, Mr. Um, Madribul Haq, sir, can we proceed to the next round? Okay. Yeah. yeah. We'll proceed. Thank you, Honorable Jury Board. My teammates uh, from GenLab, Shoji, Vishrat, and Mim for coordinating uh, the program. Uh, we, we do have uh, Imran uh, from, from uh, Green Ambassador. So, while organizing Climate Launchpad, we had a scheme uh, as a part of it, Green Ambassador. We collected Green Ambassador from all over Bangladesh. Out of around 40 uh, applications, we picked around 10 youths, 10 youths from different institutes, universities, colleges, or campuses, and they helped us in promoting the whole program around the country. And because of their work, because of their hard work, we finally actually got 106 applications. So out of these, uh, these uh, 10 uh, uh, and uh, including all the three countries, we have around 20 green ambassador. We are picking one best ambassador per country. So for Bangladesh, uh, we have decided uh, to uh, bring Imran, Imran Halimi as our best ambassador. Imran's contribution because of Imran and his other friends, with their contribution made the voice hard. The climate launchpad was hard in the country campuses, and hence you all applied. So I will give Imran very uh, uh, a little floor now. Imran will share his journey, what he felt. But uh, before that, let me share a, a few more details about Imran with you. Thank you for joining us, Imran. Imran, uh, I'd like to give you the floor, and if you please continue or share your thoughts and feedbacks about climate launch that within two or three minutes. Thank you, Bhaiya. Uh, thank you, Rathul, uh, So I, uh, I would thank you, J uh, Lab, uh, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, I'm Ahmed Imran Halimi, a proud Green Ambassador of J uh, Lab, and I have uh, I was closely connected with uh, Gen Lab uh, for a quite uh, quite long time um, because in 2000, uh, 20, uh, 2018 I joined uh, their 24 hours climate launch uh, climate hackathon and uploaded by everyone. Uh, then this year, 
this year to in 2020 uh, i got an opportunity to become a green ambassador of genlab so i could not hesitate uh, hesitate to miss this opportunity uh, uh, thank you ratul bhai and his team uh, for uh, of genlab for believing me believe in me um, as i am one of the green ambassador i always try to grab the opportunity to make the impactful uh, uh, impactful entrepreneurship uh, from my very beginning uh, uh, from my very beginning of the promotional activities uh, of climate hotspot uh, i try to i followed a, uh, my own road map uh, like i have connected with many entrepreneur communities i used this network to promote uh, promote the program uh, as this running covid 19 situation uh, we have no uh, no other option uh, without using social media to promote the climate launchpad program we have no physical meeting or we have no physical uh, attribution with entrepreneur so we try to utilize the uh, our social media my social media platform as well as my network to build uh, build a uh, Build a promotional activities for the climate launchpad, and uh, so I go, I got a good response from uh, from my network. And to describe myself, uh, I am a social entrepreneur uh, trying to uh, leave a footstep in uh, uh, on Earth by uh, mean, uh, my meaning, meaningful businesses. And I am an uh, agriculturist by education, and I always try to serve in my communities. Uh, my entrepreneurship journey began from the uh, from an internship opportunity of uh, of Microsoft Young Microsoft and Young Bangla, and uh, there I was taught entrepreneurship and had an opportunity to compete with 750 plus uh, business uh, with other business team. Uh, I successfully completed the entrepreneurship uh, uh, in, uh, internship program, and then I I was go through a competition, and I was one of the top five business, co uh, business uh, competition winner of this program uh, th that was microsoft young bangla summit 2018 uh, then i am uh, big my business is i'm relentlessly working to establish a community of urban farming and uh, urban farming platform where people can uh, get the, our ex uh, agriculture agriculture expertise as well as uh, they can sell their products for, uh, to our communities and we're running our business from 2018 and maintaining a good revenue as well. I, I participated in many entrepreneurship based competitions from 2018 after Microsoft Young Bangla and uh, I participated in GP Pre Accelerator, Youth Collab, EO Global Student Entrepreneurship Competition Regional, uh, Regional Finals and Mega Penis 2.0 as well as BOSC cohort venture cohort and getting rejected from few finals uh, lastly i own uh, two of our uh, two of the final, final competition uh, as well uh, my recent success was in uh, mega penis 2.0 i uh, i was one of the first runners of uh, of this competition and as well in BOSC venture uh, cohort, cohort 2 i was the one of the winner team of this uh, competition and it is a quite unforgettable opportunity for me to talk here in this final, uh, not as a finalist, but as one of the best green ambassador while I am working in the same path as well. Uh, I once again thank, I want to thank the Gen Lab uh, for recognizing me as one of the best green ambassador. And thank you all. Best wishes for all the finalists here. Thank you. Thank you, Imran. Uh, so we wanted our uh, green ambassadors to get a platform here because giving youth a platform, a share, a, a place to share their ideas, or 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 getting more potentials from through GenLab is what we aspire for. So we are lucky to have you, Imran, among us and all our green ambassadors. Thank you so much for joining. So now, uh, now is the time we move forward to almost end of today's program. Uh, before heading towards our chief guest, I would like to want to hear a small feedback, some feedback from our jury board members. If I can see right, all our jury members are here, present here. So I will uh, request uh, one by one and they might share their feedbacks or any thoughts or any future suggestions to uh, the participant and also for the organizers as well. 
if i uh, may start with uh, mr shamim esanul haq uh, shamim esanul haq is an assistant professor of brag business school and senior research fellow at uh, center for entrepreneurship development uh, shamim sir if you may share a few words with us thank you ratan for giving me the opportunity to uh, say something uh, on this occasion i think uh, this was really a great initiative and uh, i feel honored to be part of this process um, climate change is a very serious issue for bangladesh and as i speak we can feel the uh, we we are, we are experiencing the impact of climate change uh, in the guise of uh, you know harmful floods uh, people being displaced and other negative um, uh, issues um, uh, that is uh, basically buffeting bangladesh so um, using the power of entrepreneurship youth and uh, new ideas to handle or tackle uh, climate issues is certainly something that needs to be given more attention um, more resources should be devoted to it and this effort certainly um uh, is a is a, looks towards the future and is a very praiseworthy effort um some notes on the competition uh, i think it was very hard for all the jury members to decide uh, today to uh, decide which team did better because all of them were really great ideas and uh, all of them were very enthusiastic uh, obviously the best teams uh did win and um, everyone weighed in um very critically before giving their verdict some of the business ideas were viable um grounded to reality and um could be started immediately um what impressed me particularly was uh, uh you could uh, sift through all these ideas and uh, actually uh bring out some of the most uh, interesting and uh, viable ideas uh, the process really is working that's what it tells me so um, that's something um, uh, we should uh, uh, perhaps uh, give you kudos for and uh, give gen lab kudos for um, aside from that i think it's all well organized given the pandemic uh, uh, i did not miss anything not being in a large hall room and uh, also uh, my colleagues and uh, members from the uh, government of Bangla bangladesh uh, uh, mr mujibul haq particularly uh, isuf abdullah sir um um mr clear all of them uh, ha are here and uh, that gives a lot of credence uh, to this initiative and uh, to this effort and i think uh, next year uh, you will uh, do well again thank you thank you mr shamim esanul haq uh, for your kind words uh, May I please uh, move to uh, Mr. Yusuf Abdullah, uh, Abu Yusuf Abdullah, uh, uh, professor from Institute of Business Administration, University of Dhaka, and also currently uh, he is uh, working as a vice chancellor of Northern University of Business and Technology. Uh, sir, you do, uh, if you may kindly share a few words. All right, uh, uh, Ratul De, thank you so much. Uh, it's really very wonderful session today. I enjoy it here along with you and. Uh, is great initiative from this platform and i'm really very honored uh, and uh, uh, well, uh, th this is what i was just uh, going to share beforehand uh, the 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 kind of challenge that we are going to have is basically our climate change and the environmental impact so uh, the the young minds and the young generations are yeah, is basically is our responsibility to to motivate them uh, to, to educate them the the kind of a damages that we uh, we we basically did in our past uh, and bangladesh is having a is a greater challenge rather in the in the aspect that we have huge number of populations the density of the population uh, is the number one in the world and the, the smallest one of the smallest geographical location uh, that we are having so in that context uh, to for the development of the growth and the, and the, and the gdp as concerned Uh, our environment basically plays a very critical role uh, in bangladesh so we really uh, need to be very careful about it at the same time we have to educate our young minds and young boys and girls who will be taking responsibility for the leadership of the next time so uh, the 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 technology is coming uh, uh, and the, the, at the, and, the, and the, at the same time the environment will be uh, will be critically important so in a combination of those of these the taking Uh, care of the climate taking care of the environment 
and moving as per the as per the technological advancements that will be the really the the big issue and the big challenge for our generations and i think from that scale and aspect uh, today's session was really excellent and i enjoyed it uh, it's really very enlightening one and i must appreciate to the initiators those who are associated with this platform uh, uh, i really congratulate them and appreciate this effort thank you so much thank you uh, mr abu yusuf abdullah for sharing your thoughts and kind words with us um, may i please uh, go to our next uh, mr nazmul korim uh, nazmul korim is the senior investment uh, manager at uh, Abishkar Frontier Fund. So uh, I have heard a lot about Nazmul, uh, Mr. Nazmul Korim from uh, from one of my senior brother about uh, how he manages the investment uh, firm and many other things. Uh, so uh, Nazmul Korim, uh, kindly please, the floor is yours. So hi, Nazmul here from Abishkar Capital. Abishkar is a leading impact investment firm globally, and we have presence in South Asia, Southeast Asia, and Africa. We are trying to bring 1 billion excluded population into the fold of financial inclusion uh, through uh, entrepreneurial driven venture capital solutions. Refreshing to be in this, uh, uh, you know, be a part of climate launchpad. I have seen uh, compelling uh, environmental uh, friendly ideas, which are also commercially viable. Uh, so as uh, my other panelists, uh, you know, reinforce that uh, there is a call for action today and now. We have done uh, damages to environment in quest of economic growth, uh, and we are at a path of irreversible damage. And we do need to galvanize into action if we want to, you know, leave a better world for our next generation. And to ensure this in intergenerational equity, uh, entrepreneur entrepreneurs have a strong role to play. And good to see that. There are really compelling ideas coming into four through this platform. Thank you, Mr. Nathmul Puri, for your concrete and uh, impactful ideas and words. I would move forward to our uh, last but not least uh, jury board member, Carrie Jennings. Uh, Carrie is uh, uh, working with uh, Freshwater Minnesota as director of uh, research and policy. And Kerry is, it's, I guess it's 1 a.m. in her time. Thank you, Kerry, for all the hard work you are doing for our program. Uh, please, you, if you may share a few words. Yes, just words, since it is 1 a.m. Um, I do want to say that I appreciate that this is the end of a very long process and that everyone who has reached this stage is a winner, has succeeded, and really developed some wonderful ideas. I hope they all go forward. And I'm very inspired by the hard work and the entrepreneurial spirit of everyone that I've heard of, heard from today. And um, again, I'm honored as well to have participated. It's very inspiring. Thank you once again, uh, Ms. Kerry Jennings. Um, now I would like to move forward to our chief guest of today's session, Mr. Mojibul Haq. Uh, Mr. Mojibul Haq is currently leading uh, Startup Bangladesh and uh, as the project director of the uh, Innovation and Design Entrepreneurship Academy under ICT Department, Ministry of Information and Communication Technology of Bangladesh. Uh, and as I told uh, before, uh, he leads mostly almost all of the startup uh, and uh, entrepreneurial activities that our government is initiating. We are really lucky and, and I would say privileged and it's very inspiring that sir, we are having, it today, having you today with us. So without further ado, I would uh, request you to share your thoughts and words and whatever you have observed so far. And after that, at the end, uh, if you may please declare the champion team and first runner up and second runner up. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon. Uh, respected chairperson and organizer of Climate Launchpad 2020 Bangladesh round, and members of the jury 
board and dear participants welcome to startup bangladesh idea project it is my pleasure to joining this national final of climate launch pet 2020 bangladesh town as chief guest climate launch pet is the world's largest green launch pet business competition you know startup bangladesh is also one of the largest platform of bangladesh startup bangladesh idea project is uh, a unique project of bangladesh government this is a branch child of our honorable state uh, advisor mr shoji wajid joy we provide different kinds of facilities for the startup we provide mentoring grooming funding and co-working space for the startup by this time we provide 10 lakh taka bangladeshi taka fund for the 135 startups some of the startups are growing up four to five startups are uh, doing work regarding climate change uh, sector i request these uh, five or six teams please submit your idea to startupbangladesh.gov.bd we will also uh, provide fund for this kinds of startup to ensure our future generation and to uh, save our climate uh, save the climate of bangladesh we provide grant for pre seed level pre seed money for the startup and whole money is for the grant and after pre seed receiving pre seed money we provide equity 1 crore taka to 5 crore taka for the startups if one startup is growing up we provide this kinds of facilities in Bang- uh, for bangladeshi startup from government side now i declared uh, winning team of the uh, of our uh, competitions champion team is christex and first runner up is eco crops and second runner up is Rithi, I hope our Bangladeshi team will be the finalist in Netherlands. I finally, finally advise, advance congratulate the winners of the Bangladeshi teams, and thanks for every everybody to to to. To choose uh, to choose me as the chief guest of this program. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Mozibul Haq. So, uh, if I may uh, re, uh, re reassure or re, re concern the names, our second runner-up for Climate Launchpad Bangladesh 2020 is RE3, second runner-up, which is the third position, and uh, first runner-up, uh, which means second position. Uh, is eco reps it's it and the cha- yes and the champion team the champion team for climate launch pad 2020 for bangladesh session is cassetex so congratulations to team cassetex uh, gopal uh, mr gopal tosif and your teammates and also to eco reps and re3 and for parmeniers and shobuj shohor as i have learned as i have seen and as we have heard from climate launch pad as well that the game is just started so if you feel disheartened by any means please don't 
platform is there, a lot of possibilities are there. So there will be opportunities. Uh, let's uh, not uh, extend today's session anymore. Congratulations to all of you again. Thanks to all our jury board members. And we have already had some requests from our participants that they want to connect with the jury boards in person. And also, uh, just to let you know, those of you who are watching, these top three teams, they will be participating in the regional finale. So if our jury board can uh, assist them with anything, any further support, that would be very, very welcome. Uh, thank you to all our jury board members, my team, Ishrat, Shojit, Sophia, Tulmi, uh, Abid, and everyone who joined here, our Green Ambassador, Fatika, and Imran. Thank you for joining. And most importantly, thank you, Mr. Mojibul Haq, and uh, our uh, our friend and uh, supporter, Dr. Goswami from UNPC, for uh, supporting us in this great endeavor. Thank you again, and see you uh, uh, very you. soon in next stages. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.